Ozone and the ozone layer are often misunderstood, which is not helped in the way in which they're described in the media. So in order to understand these, we must first need to take a broader look at oxygen itself. Pure oxygen is most commonly found as O2, or two oxygen atoms bonded together in a double bond. And whilst this bond is fairly stable, it isn't as stable as sometimes when oxygen bonds with other atoms. There is, however, another form of pure oxygen which you can take, which is that of ozone, or O3. This is now where three oxygen atoms are bonded together. And in this case, the bonds are extremely weak, and they're very easy to disrupt. Hence, ozone is a very rare gas. Now, O2 is odourless and colourless, but ozone, most importantly, is pale blue in colour and has a rather nasty smell to it. This leads us to the question, if ozone is so unstable, why is it actually present at all? Well, in nature, this is down to solar radiation. In our stratosphere, when highly energetic solar radiation strikes O2, splits it apart. Some of this free oxygen then attaches itself to another O2 molecule, and this forms O3, or ozone. This process is constantly occurring, and of course it happens most often in the tropical regions of our planet, where the solar radiation is greatest. From here, the atmospheric conditions blow the ozone around our planet. This does mean that there's a lot of variation in the levels of ozone due to factors like seasons, weather and winds. Once the ozone has been produced, however, due to its inherently unstable nature, it can easily be broken down back into O2 once more. However, it does mean that without human interference, the level of ozone will remain fairly constant, even if it may be at different levels at different parts of our planet at different times of the year. As well as the quite widely known human interactions which can destroy ozone, human activity can actually also lead to the production of ozone. When ultraviolet light strikes some of the pollutants from burning fossil fuels, ozone can be formed. This can reach significant levels where the wind has carried pollutions out from the centre of a city and to nearby rural areas. But, before you begin to think that we need to burn more f fossil fuels to so solve the ozone problem, there may be some major issues you need to take care of first. The first one, and one that's actually rarely talked about, is that because of its structure, Ozone is actually a very powerful oxidising agent. This means it's actually hazardous to life, because even at relatively low concentrations at ground level, ozone can cause significant damage to the lungs and other breathing organs of humans and other animals. There are several thousand deaths each year which are directly related to the damage caused by ozone. The other factor is that the gas, of course, is at a low level, in a, and so in order to protect us, it really needs to be high up in the atmosphere. This, of course, brings us to the most common misconception about the ozone layer. That is, that it's a dense layer of ozone which deflects harmful radiation away from the planet. Of course, there are some easily identifiable problems with this. The simplest one being that the higher you go up in our atmosphere, the less dense gases become. So, the lower stratosphere say from 10 to 20 miles above the surface of the Earth, the gases present are going to be anything but dense. The other, as I hope you figured out by now, is that those gases present in this region, they're not going to be mainly ozone or anything like it. Instead, ozone is less than 10 parts per million of the various gases present. Just in this region, the layer has a concentration about 10 times greater than other parts of our atmosphere. So the ozone layer is just part of the atmosphere that has a higher concentration of ozone. It does also mean that the, because the other gases are constantly moving and ozone is such a small part of those gases present, getting accurate figures for the levels of ozone have not been easy to obtain. The most important property of ozone in the atmosphere is the ability to protect life from harmful rays of the sun. These rays are in the form of ultraviolet light. Now, very short waves of ultraviolet light are completely filtered out by the nitrogen in our atmosphere. The slightly longer UVC light is screened out by normal oxygen and ozone. Most of the harmful UVB light is filtered out by the ozone, just leaving enough for us to process the vitamin D in our skins. However, 
Most of the longer waves of UVA light passes through the ozone layer and reaches the surface of the Earth. Thankfully though, this is the least harmful form of ultraviolet light. Now that might give you a little bit more of an insight into the ozone, make it a little bit easier to understand.